How's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining Level M Diecast. Today, we do have a nice showcase for you. We're going to talk about Matchbox. We're going to talk about 70th anniversary construction theme started in 2023 that does continue into 2024. We're going to run down all the unit numbers that are currently available. We're going to kick it off with this one. This is the 2012 Basic Range uh, Matchbox Scraper. So this is the original deco that they have kind of borrowed uh, for the 2023 70th anniversary deco theme that they started. So this does say MBX construction on the side. They did alter a little bit. It does say matchbox construction on the new ones. But this is the original version. This is exactly where it came from. This is a micro Heralda design, of course. Uh, this one does have the nice beefy beadlock wheels on there. Looks very, very good. Uh, one of the rare occurrences of something good to come back out of uh, like 2012, 20, 2012, 2013, 2014 era of Matchbox. They were doing some ridiculous decos at the time. So at the beginning of 2023, we did get this particular scraper. This was released in the five pack. We did do a unboxing. I actually missed this in my unboxing that it was a re-released model. This one kind of wants to take off. I do apologize about that. Hopefully we can get it to stay. So this one doesn't have a number. This is also the updated casting that has a little bit less metal in it. The original casting was uh, a little bit more metal on the bottom. You know, they kind of retool a little bit to take some of that metal away, which is unfortunate. But this one doesn't have a number, so we're going to call this unit number one. It does have the uh, more updated, nicer, newer, rounder off-road wheels on it as well. But it is the same essential deco. The original version versus the new one here. You can see the differences in the base. So the one on the top has all that extra plastic on it, but uh, they are the same deco. Of course, it was unit number 745 back then because that was, of course, the man number. So this is the actual theme that debuted in 2023. Um, all construction stuff got new decos that year, which was a good, good thing. So this is the Chevy Silverado. This is basically like a, a foreman or a boss supervisor, that kind of person like that for unit number two. It's a really good theme. I think it's a pretty realistic theme. I'm really happy that Matchbox actually went back to their roots, to construction equipment, construction stuff like that, and actually put forth a little bit of effort on those. They all have this kind of a yellow-orangey kind of color. There's some yellow striping on the wheels with black hubs. That's pretty common. Um, that will carry through all of them. So they are universal as far as the you know matching themes. And, of course, that is the whole purpose but that one looks pretty good. Does say Silverado on the side, just in case you didn't know it was a Silverado. This is the Road Roller. This is unit number three. So this one is a this was a new casting back in the beginning of 2022. Um, the 2023 release was pretty hideous. Looked kind of like a Christmas car, but we're back to a realistic construction deco. Not really. I'm not really convinced that we needed a new road roller. I think the one that we had previous was actually a pretty good casting. But I do understand how maybe they uh, wanted to redo it just because it was maybe a maybe a safety issue. Maybe. I don't know. Because it actually turned in the front. The older previous casting actually had a turning drum in the front. Um, and I, I don't mean like rolling drum because this one still rolls too. I mean that it actually pivoted um, like an actual real road roller would. But this one looks okay for unit number three. Just matches, of course. Unit number four. This is the Fawn Dump Truck. I will always call this the Fawn Dump Truck. I don't care what they call it now. Debuts or traces its lineage all the way back to the Lesney era. This one is pretty good. There's not a whole lot of deco on this one. Um, just a little bit of print in the front there says unit number four. And then, of course, it has the logo on the side where the driver compartment is. Um... Casting's been modified, obviously, since the Lesney era. Um, you know, and even through the Tyco era, at least it still kept a metal dump bed. It's been a plastic dump bed for many, many, many years, um, which is understandable. The original version of this casting is actually kind of a heavyweight, but I really like this one. And, of course, you know, it's a dump truck, so it dumps. There's some decent decent detail down in there with some kind of transmission and rear end detail in there. So, at least they kept some of the detail for the casting in there. So I do like that one. I like the fact that that, that particular casting still is chugging along. All right, a casting that's not very good. Unit number five. This is the generic backhoe. 
the gray backhoe section you see there is part of the gray base as you also see so it doesn't move it doesn't do anything doesn't pivot pretty good detail on it. it does have some nice outrigger detail as well um, but it does have a movable piece in the front the scoop there in the front it does lift so as that rolls around obviously there's no interior and stuff like that it's it's very basic in its uh, assembly so that it can have a moving feature so there is the bucket lifted it's always had uh, offset and mismatched wheels um, you know matchbox team is trying to trying to give it that illusion that it has bigger wheels in the back like an actual backhoe you know so i give them kudos for trying um, but this is just not a very good generic casting i mean even when they put this uh the national parks livery on that uh didn't really help at all all right moving on to number six this one was kind of a late addition to the uh basic range this year so this is a generic casting as usual most every single construction one is um, but this one is pretty cool. Uh, I think this is called the ground grabber or ground something or other. Maybe maybe I'll say it on the other side. Um, it has basically two moving features. It has a 360 rotation and then it also has a moving bucket arm. It doesn't actually scoop though or anything like that, but it's okay. So it's called the ground grabber. You see that on the side. Um, it's it's okay. It's okay. It's there's a lot of plastic to this casting. As a matter of fact. The yellow orange cab you see is the only thing that's metal, and there's there's literally not even interior or anything inside of there to allow it to have uh, the functionality that it does. Like I said, the bucket piece lifts up, and then of course you do have a full 360 rotation. So uh, I mean, in the realm of the one dollar car nowadays, well now it's a dollar twenty. It's a pretty good amount of detail. It's a pretty good amount of detail. I mean, we can't get too, too crazy. We can't ask too much. I wish we could, but unfortunately we can't. All right, we are jumping to unit number nine. Yes, we are jumping to unit number nine because as of this moment, there is no unit number seven or unit number eight. Um, I do anticipate that those will show up. I believe that those will show up in 2024, either in five packs or mainline. But I am confident that we will see those. This is unit number nine. This is the Trash King. Um, this is a really, really nice casting. It's actually one of the... This is the best generic trash truck Matchbox has ever done, in my opinion. The original version of this casting was even better because it had a little bit of a moving feature there in the back. Uh, but this is the updated casting, which has a lot more plastic to it. As a matter of fact, the kind of grayish silver cab you see is the only thing that's metal on the entire casting. But it doesn't feel cheap or anything. It looks pretty good. I like that the, there's just a ton of print on the side. They really put a lot, a lot of print on the side of the uh, dump section there in the back. Just to bring a lot of details out. I think it looks good. I actually wrote out the word Garbage King, which I think is hilarious. But it works. Of course, the matching theme works as well. Because, of course, you need trash trucks in your construction fleet. All right, this is the Drill Digger. This is unit number 11. Yes, there is no unit number 10. So we are missing 7, 8, and 10 so far. This is the Drill Digger. It does have two moving features, uh, but they're pretty rudimentary. The seat that you see in there is actually part of the base. That's how they get away with having two moving features. One thing I don't really particularly like about this casting is it's, it's, it's essentially like a skid steer, but it's huge. Like, it's really, really big. And uh, if you put this next to Matchbox's actual skid steer, um, it makes it look makes the skid steer look like it's a little little tiny toy. So it does have a movable arm, so the arm does go up and down, and then it does have this little piece here that does drill, quote unquote drill. Uh, but that's as far down as it goes. That's as close as you can get it to the ground. It's more of a gimmick. Um, I like the fact that the effort was made when this casting was new, but. Um, you know, the execution wasn't all that great. I'm not really sure why they didn't just let the arms go down further, but I'm fairly certain it's because they didn't want it to uh, fall down and then drag uh, and no way to hold up the arms itself. This would be my assumption. But that one's, that one's okay. It's okay. You need, a, you need a drilling apparatus in your construction fleet. You also need to clean up after yourself. So unit number 12, this is the street sweeper, the little urban style street sweeper. I really like this one because we really needed to get this street sweeper with a more realistic deco. Um, 
I liked the Ink Construction one. Um, that one was pretty nice. Came out of five pack. But the single releases of this one thus far, they've been a, a little bit out there. You know, a little bit out there. Different colored windows and stuff. This one's very nice. This one looks very realistic. The color combination looks great. Um, I just think that this one really, really hit the point. I think that if we can get more real decos on generic castings, I think people will learn to like the generic castings a little bit more. Just my opinion. All right, moving on to unit number 14. Yes, there is no unit number 13. Maybe that's a superstition. Who knows? But we don't have 13. So 7, 8, 10, and 13 are going to be our numbers that are open. This one is yet another Silverado. Of course, Mr. Geraldo must uh, like Chevys because um, all the site foremans seem to be driving Silverados. This is the older body style. This is the lifted version. Matchbox did do a... Standard uh, right height version, I guess you can call, and then they also did this lifted version. They were the same basic casting. This casting's obviously been modified over the years. This casting also happened to be in a National Parks deco that came out in a nine pack that is probably the hardest to find modern matchbox uh, in existence. That model is extremely hard to find, and of course, it happens to be a National Parks deco, which people absolutely love. So. Kind of a double whammy. I really like this casting, though. I think it looks great, especially with this newer wheel on there. Those old school Matchbox wheels from back in the day definitely didn't look as good. This one looks leaps and bounds better. All right, unit number 15. It is the Fawn. The Fawn tanker. I'm always going to call it the Fawn. I'm just am. They didn't make a tanker back in the Lesney era, but it's the same basic casting. It's not the exact same one as the dump truck. Um, but it's basically the same casting. This one kind of got modified a little bit extra. Uh, because of the tank on the back, they can add, of course, a little bit more plastic to the model. This one doesn't have any prints on the actual body. It's all on the tank. But it looks good. It's nice and big, so you can see that, that logo much, much better just because how big it is. There's a lot of detail to the tank itself. Of course, it doesn't hold water or anything like that. And of course, this guy wants to just take off like the dump truck kind of wanted to do. Had a couple of them want to do that. I do apologize. This one is a really nice version. And I think he says I'm done with my rotator time. I like the wheels, though. The wheels are a very, very good one for this one. The dump truck looked better with the bigger bead locks. This guy looks better with the smaller, kind of rounded off-road wheels. Uh, just, just basically my opinion. All right, unit number 16. This is the ground grinder, um, which is weird. A ground pretty sure it's called a ground grinder it says it on the side um it's kind of interesting for this because we actually got one of these in real working rigs as well with the correct deco um it has no number though we'll take a look at that one next but this one looks pretty good of course you have to have a road scraper as part of your construction crew so pretty much we've been able to do most any jobs we don't have a crane though i think a crane would be very very important um, but Matchbox only makes one crane currently, and that's in the real working rig line. But this one looks pretty good. All the details and stuff there. Of course, no interior because it has an extra axle. And, of course, the blades don't touch the ground. But if you were playing with that in the dirt, you can make it work. There is the ground grader, or road grader, I'm sorry. You call it the road grader in the real working rig line. It is the exact same model. It's just bigger, more detailed, and has a functional blade. This one is in the exact deco as well. Not exactly as the one we just saw, but it is in the construction deco theme. There's no number. This one has no number. Not sure if it's going to supposed to be fitting in one of those holes that we've seen thus far, um, or if it's just a standalone model. But either way, it looks good. And I was happy that we got a real, uh, actual new deco on a real working rig line, which is really, really difficult these days. But that one looks pretty good. I actually like that one a lot. That one looks better than the uh, the basic range one. All right, moving on to number 17. So this is the road scraper. Um, so, of course, we started off with the road scraper. Now we are getting an actual numbered one for the units. Number 17, this one looks pretty good. I do like the deco theme on this one. This guy has been in both Rannick and Ink construction before. So the scraper's been uh, pretty busy with his duty. I like all the print on the front. Looks good. All the details on this one look good. I like the fact that it's a little bit more heavy on the silver for the back end. 
kind of breaks it up just a little bit. But of course, it still matches everything else. Looks good. Of course, you do have that USA A58 on the side towards the scraping blade. Because good old Michael Heralda. He is responsible for all these decos, by the way, because you guys were curious. They are all his own designs. All right, moving into unit number 20. Yes, we do have a gap. 18 and 19 is a gap. However, I will tell you that number 18 is the convoy that's coming out next year. It is a dump truck convoy that has already uh, been circulating. Picture's already out there. It comes with the Quarry King. Um, my assumption would be the Quarry King is number 19. They'll get your consistency there, 18 and 19 with those. And then we move on to number 20, which is this one right here. This is the tipper truck. This did come in hitch and haul. Uh, this came in uh, packed with a excavator on the trailer. That excavator doesn't have a number. It's not part of this particular theme, uh, you know, or anything like that. There's no print on it. But this one looks okay. Of course, the generic one. This one is a little bit weird because we get a little extra print on the front with the headlight detail, something we typically don't get with uh, generic models, which um, doesn't surprise me, but. Uh, just think it's kind of weird when we get uh, generics in a little bit higher price point product and they get a little bit of extra print, but that's all that guy does. He just tips. That's all. It doesn't tip enough to uh, dump out or anything like that, but uh, at least it does something. You know, it's it's all right. All right, moving on to number 22, because yes, we have a, another gap. Number 21 is a gap. So we are missing 7, 8, 10, 13, uh, 18, 19, and now 21. So I do apologize about the rolling there. So again, all the site foremans, all the site supervisors, all the guys that run actual vehicles on the site, apparently they all drive Colorado, or they all drive Chevrolets. This particular Colorado joins the fleet. This is number 22. Even though this is like super off-roady, it's got the big snorkel on it, it perfectly matches the theme. I think it would look perfectly fine on a job site, especially with the deco on it. This is from a 2024 five pack. So we've already covered this one on the channel. So just in case you guys are curious, it is going to pull into 2024. Um, and I'm hoping that all of those open numbers get filled in. All right, number 23. This is the Dirt Smasher, which is an interesting name. Not really able to smash dirt per se. It does have a claw apparatus on the front, but uh, I, you wouldn't be able to smash dirt with that per se. It's a very interesting generic. Um, it's it's really, really weird. So the claw part there in the front um, is actually, well, the claws are the actual front of it. And then it's got a blade in the back, which is just weird. It's a very interesting generic. This one looks good with the theme. That looks good with the colors, all that kind of stuff like that. No interior on this model. And of course, it does have one moving feature. So you can close the blades there in the front or the little pokes in the front there. Again, I'm not really sure how you're supposed to smash dirt with that, but uh, that is what the team calls it. All right, moving on to unit number 24. This is from a Hitch and Toe uh, pack. This one actually came out relatively, or Hitch and Hall, came out relatively recently. This is the highway maintenance truck. Of course, the Chevy uh, highway maintenance truck. It's not licensed anymore. It's just a generic. This casting debuts, uh, traces all the way back to 1990. When it was a new casting. I really like this casting a lot. Um, I have pretty much every one they made. Um, I still have some holes in there and stuff like that. But it's definitely one of my favorite Matchbox castings of all time. It's been modified several times over the years. Originally the blade used to be a separate piece. You could take it off. Now it is molded in with the base and it's fixed. Obviously they added a trailer hitch to it too. Uh, not that long ago. Which I do find a little bit interesting. Because the model that comes with that in the hitch and haul pack cannot be towed so there is no need for a trailer hitch because you cannot tow this road stripe king this is one of those models that's just an absolute no-brainer definitely needed to be included in the construction theme i do like this one a lot this one is really 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 nice the deco looks really really good very realistic and for a change again with generic we actually get a little bit extra print we get an extra pass in the front because the hitch and haul line is just a little bit more expensive so they can put in a little bit more detail into the model. So we're going to roll out with that guy. Units 1 through 25 with the holes, of course. 7, 8, 10, 13, 18, 19, and 21 are our holes. 
Um, but we do have several models coming for 2024, which should, should fill in all those holes. So we're going to roll out. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this showcase. It was pretty awesome. We'll catch you next time here at Level M. Peace.